In the culture wars, there are no winners, just podcasters. Only a few are willing to risk their lives in the face of some of the dumbest ideas to have ever captured human civilization. Every week, we, Megan Dom and Sarah Hader, humbly accept this mission to bring you conversations that are equal parts stunning, brave, and possibly full of shit. Welcome to A Special Place in Hell. Sarah, there is a lot to discuss this week. Um, we are going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about the philosopher, Martha Nussbaum, who has been making, uh, waves on Twitter as, uh, elderly philosophers are apt to do. Um, but before that, we've got big, big news out of Texas, your, your home state. Mm -hmm. Or, um, a big tweet anyway, big tweet out is, of Texas, which is, which is a big news on everything podcast. in Texas That's is big, including the tweets. Right. Yeah. Um, so you, want, you want to read the tweet? Should I? Yeah, read the tweet? I will you want read to deliver that. it. Yeah, yes. Um, so we should say this. Uh, this was posted um, a couple of days ago. This is somebody named Ryan Hamilton, who is um, apparently a, a radio. He's a he's a he's a YouTuber, but he's also a kind of radio uh, host. He's from, originally from the UK, now lives in Texas. Okay, he posted this uh, alongside a, a photo of himself. Uh, looking, looking very sad. Okay. He says, my heart is broken, broken heart emoji. As friends and family know, my wife was pregnant with our second child and about to begin her second trimester. A few days ago, she had severe pains and bleeding and had to go to the emergency room. There, it was discovered that our baby no longer had a heartbeat. Devastated doesn't come close to what that feels like. Unfortunately, for people like us, because of the current laws in the state of Texas, that was only the beginning of this nightmare. Jess, my wife, had a, quote, incomplete miscarriage. And what needed to happen, what was best for her and her health, was to terminate the pregnancy and get the baby out. The doctor gave her a medication that would move this process along and sent her home, where apparently we would be handling it ourselves. We were told it might take a couple of attempts before it worked. I'm assuming that means attempts with the medication. I'm not sure. Okay. He continues. I'll let you decide how you feel about that. After a long, painful night of the equivalent of early labor, the baby was still with her. So we went back to the emergency center to get the second dose. A new doctor was on call. He was an older man. You could hear him in the hallway as he said, I'm not giving her a pill so she can go home and have an abortion. Being well aware that our baby no longer had a heartbeat. Then he came into the room and said, and I quote, considering the current stance, I'm not going to prescribe you this pill. Then just send us on our way. The current stance, did he really just say that? No one should ever have to hear their wife say, get this dead baby out of me. Can you even imagine how that must feel? The pain and the bleeding continued, so we decided to go to another hospital about an hour away. There was a female doctor on call there, and I thought we might have better luck. I should probably mention the procedure to get the baby out is called a DNC. It's scary and traumatizing, but sometimes necessary in situations like ours, especially in emergency circumstances. So we get to the next hospital. They take Jess in, ask her a bunch of questions, do a new scan, confirm that the baby is still there with no heartbeat, and then disappear for hours, only to come back and keep asking the same questions over and over. It's becoming clear that their primary concern is not my wife's health. Instead, they seem to be worried about the legalities involved. <clears throat> so they decide that it is not, quote, enough of an emergency to perform the DNC. They do, however, prescribe another stronger final dose of the medication for us to try again at home. So we go home to try again. Another long day night of early labor pains, only to, to discover my wife unconscious in the bathroom, having to pick up my wife's cold, limp body off that bathroom floor. Not sure if I was about to lose her is something I will never forget. She had to be rushed to the hospital. By this point, she had lost so much blood and bodily fluid, her body gave out. They were able to stabilize her, give her the fluid she needed, and she came back home yesterday afternoon. We were also able to confirm that our baby was no longer with her. Not only do we have to deal with the loss of our baby, we have to live with a nightmare of what my wife just experienced because of political and religious beliefs. All caps. My wife's health should have come first, period. God knows what mental and emotional damage this has done. If you consider yourself a staunch pro-lifer, one, you have never been through what we just went through, and two, you should take a long, hard look in the mirror and reevaluate your reasons for supporting such a cold, barbaric, ignorant point of view. It's not that black and white, and it's never going to be. If you think you're 
prayer to end abortion sign in your yard is Christian, I suggest you revisit the teachings of Jesus and try again. If you support these laws that make abortion illegal and result in people being put through what we just were, you should be ashamed of yourself. I have never been so angry or heartbroken and the devastation I'm feeling must pale in comparison to what my poor wife is feeling. Okay. So this went very viral. I retweeted Mm -hmm. it myself and said Mm -hmm. everybody should read it. Um, And uh, yes, celebrities have weighed in, uh, various journalists, uh, public thinkers, um, whole gamut of people. Um, I, as, as listeners know, I have a, a sort of um, a bullshit detector that works in, in overdrive much of the time, but I um, thought this was pretty sincere. Uh, you had a, a different uh, view. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw you tweet it and then I messaged you about it. And okay. I just, I do want to say that Mia Farrow, now that I'm on the tweet again, I'm saying that Mark Hamill responded, um, giving his, uh, you know, heart emoji, broken heart emoji and Mia Farrow, your favorite person also responded. Okay. You know what? Oh, Mia Farrow, this is, Mia Farrow believes it. That it's bullshit. Okay. I take it back. Um, I don't okay. Okay. It. So here, here's, where I kind of stand on this. So my, to give a background background on how I felt about Dobbs, my assumption with it was that stories like this would start to come out and the ultimate effect of Dobbs would be that abortion in most, in most states would be, you know, on, on better grounds actually. And that public opinion itself would shift to a more reasonable position on many states because of stories like this, you know, because now you have, um, you know, journalists, um, advocates, activists, they have a um, real reason to care about public opinion on this, not just, you know, the Supreme Court opinion. And so there will be, you know, uh, there will be cases like this. And because of cases like this, there will be like a campaign around them and people will begin to feel differently about the practical implications of banning abortion, at least in like the the very strict way that that happens in some states. So, you know, I kind of felt like, okay, it's bad that Roe's gone, but that, that, that might just be a short term problem. And in the long term, we might end up closer to where, you know, much of Europe is. Um, and so it, it it is not to say that I think that this could not have happened is that as I was reading the story, a lot of things started to not make sense about um, the way that this man is telling it. Um, One is that he includes this picture of himself at the end and it's this black and white picture and shows his like wedding ring. And he's like, Oh, like he's, it's a very artsy photo. His hand is covering his face. This is a, I don't know this guy. He's he's probably in his in his fifties. He's kind of like an aging rock and roll kind of guy. Is his vibe? Yeah, yeah. And it's a very. I thought it was a very odd choice um, of picture to 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 go along with this specific story, which is about his wife, what she has been going through, um, and then to just insert himself and his like, oh, I'm so sad. You know, it was just. There's something odd about that that I find um, like, okay, well, maybe he is grieving as much as he says he's grieving, but there's definitely a performative aspect to all this. But then there's also, um, well, multiple times uh, they, they mention that everyone's aware there's no heartbeat. You know, everyone's aware this baby is dead. The doctors agree that the baby's dead. And yet they are, you know, really unwilling to do anything about getting the baby out or getting the dead baby, the corpse of the baby out. There's the older man who says, I'm not giving her a pill so she can go home and have an abortion. This is quote from his tweet. I don't understand. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me that a doctor who knows that a dead baby is dead and therefore technically what is happening cannot be an abortion and i looked it up actually i looked up um uh, the texas law on this 
and their definition of abortion, which has been the definition in Texas since um, this act was passed, which was, uh, let's see, effective September 1st, 1989. So this has been the definition um, and says uh, it defines abortion means active using or prescribing blah, 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 um, like getting rid of the, an unborn child, causing the death of an unborn child. Um, the, an act is not an act, not an abortion if the act is done with intent to uh, A, save the life or preserve the health of an unborn child, B, remove a dead unborn child whose death was caused by spontaneous abortion, or C, remove an ectopic pregnancy. So it feels to me that a doctor would recognize that this baby's dead and his approach to the removal of the dead fetus would not be this religious, oh, well, she's going to have an abortion. I'm never going to allow it. Jesus would never be okay, okay with this. Well, like, I don't think that I mean, was the okay, that response was not, but, exactly. Okay, here, here's her, but I'm not giving her a pill so she can go home and have an abortion. Mm-hmm. But the baby's dead. Okay. You know, like, the baby's dead. And I I, I feel like that this person is somebody who has trouble getting into the mindset of a religious person, because I think that that division between a dead baby and a live baby matters a lot to a religious person. It is not the act of expelling something or taking something out of a, of a woman. Yeah. It's not that that bothers them. It is killing an unborn, like, a live thing that is what bothers right and i just don't something about that doesn't sm- pass the smell p- test and you know um the other aspect of it that i think that just yeah you know eh, may, i mean it could be real it could be real it could be that multiple practitioners failed this woman again and again and again it could be there's aspects of it that we're not understanding that we're not hearing about things that he's leaving behind it's also the fact that he leaves out anything that could possibly help us identify the doctors the hospital um like and and investigate this on our own so if i was a journalist and i wanted to verify the story what would i do there's nothing i can do save you know reach out to him um there isn't even i mean a picture of a woman i i kind of you know at the end if you're going to include a picture of something like this feels weird to include a picture of yourself and not your wife you know like that's if you're doing it for attention even if you're doing it for attention I don't know. Okay. Um, the picture was a, an a, unusual choice. Um, okay, but before we get to that, I will just say, I don't think that any of this has to do with religious people. I think this has to do with doctors being terrified of um, of losing their licenses and they are beholden to you know, hospital administration and legal bodies within the hospitals. I mean, I, it's from what I have read, this kind of situation does happen more mm-hmm. than you'd think. And it's not because the laws are saying that this has to happen, but because the laws are so vaguely worded that doctors are confused and they're just not taking any chances. So in this case, I feel like the, I mean, I checked the law. I don't know how you can interpret it any other way, but I, I, I agree with you that stupid doctors exist and it is totally possible it is i'm not discounting that this is it is possible the situation is possible it's just that multiple aspects of this are Mm. feeling like more of a performance than something that happened exactly as he says it happened um it it could happen of course the doctor doesn't understand lots of things doctors don't understand and then multiple doctors don't understand okay that can happen too you're in texas like um and you just failed and failed and failed and now you posted this long thing and you connected it all to abortion so he does not connect it to doctors are confused about what this law means he connects it to uh yeah i mean consider yourself a staunch pro-life okay he's being a little he's being a little lazy there it it strikes me as something that was written in the midst of real crisis and uh and 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 grief and, and you know to the extent that it was thought out i think that he he def- he is reaching out i read this as somebody who is grieving in public because that is what is making him feel better i mean mm-hmm. whether or not you or i would do that and whether or not you or i would want our husbands to do that in if we were in that situation is one thing but the fact mm-hmm. is that a lot of people do 
get solace from the sympathy of crowds. That's mm-hmm. very common. Mm-hmm. I mean, we see it all the time. I see people mm-hmm. who have lost, you know, even their own children and are yeah. tweeting about it and yeah. the sympathy is pouring in. And I have heard people say, thank you. This actually does make me feel better. I mean, I will say that there does seem to be incredible confusion around these laws um, in states like Texas. So here's something that was from, I pulled this up from the Texas Tribune. Um you know, laws, Texas laws say treatments for miscarriages, ectopic pregnancies remain legal, but leave lots of space for confusion. Okay. So, I mean, I feel like that's such a, that's true of any law, you know, but this is, well, but this is, especially if you have idiots and some amount of people are idiots, well, you know, which which we know. Okay. But But look, you can't idiot proof everything. Okay. But but this is completely that, but I mean, is can, there any other way to word this in a way that would not confuse somebody is what I'm saying. I'm sure like, there is. I mean, because, it? well, because lawmakers make vague wording of legislation all the time for this very right. reason. It's the oldest trick in the book. Okay, let me just read this. So Texas, this is from the Texas Tribune. Texas laws banning abortions make narrow exceptions only to save the life of a pregnant patient <laughs> or prevent substantial impairment to major bodily function. Okay. Uh Lawmakers in recent years have clarified state statutes to say treatments for miscarriages known as spontaneous abortions. Okay, so the medical term for a miscarriage is a spontaneous abortion. So right there, there's like a semantic confusion because you're actually using the word abortion. Mm-hmm. Okay, so miscarriages mm-hmm. in, in, in known as spontaneous abortions in medicine um, and, and ectopic pregnancies. Well, that's a different, that's not what this guy's talking about. But the lack of clarity accompanying the threat of jail time and six figure fines for medical professionals has led some hospitals and doctors in the state to deny or delay care for pregnancy complications. And this is according to multiple reports. Doctors and experts also worry that patients with pregnancy complications may be too afraid of being accused of inducing an abortion to seek care. Okay, obviously that's not what ha- happened here. But I, I think that I think it's directly related to Dobbs. Um, the the fact that that everyone has their hands tied and these doctors aren't taking any risks, and we've as we've said on this podcast multiple times, doctors are not exactly winning the critical thinking Olympics these days. Um, it's not surprising at all. And so I actually did buy this guy's story. Um, I, I it, it was specific enough that um, it didn't. It, it struck me as entirely, uh, entirely plausible. And the fact that he left out details like, you know, who, what, where, that makes sense. I mean, he's, he doesn't want to get, he's not going to go name, you know, and a spontaneous tweet, or I don't know how spontaneous it was, but even if he sat around and thought about it for a few hours, I think it's probably wise not to name the hospitals, uh, you know, in, I, your, in your I think first... it would be wise not to tweet, but that's, of course, okay, so that's, that's what, but so look, it's, I mean, it's both, uh, the, it's all ninety nine percent of the time. It's wiser not to tweet. Okay, but this is such a. This feels to me like a weird impulse. I guess maybe because I just don't relate to it. Which is that if I this had happened to me, I would be so furious that it had happened to me. I would want to, like, sue. I, I would want to destroy lives. I mean, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't just be like sympathy when you know. Like, I would be. Um, let's take down the system let's take down let's let's do something about this i hate this doctor so much how could he do this to me he nearly killed me here's his name here's you know i mean or or i'm at the lawyer's office and i'm creating my case against this doctor or whatever it is right in this case it doesn't seem to me and i i hear what you're saying about there is confusion i'm looking at the act directly i'm looking at the, they're like it's defined as is you know in the, in this in this section you go to the section it's clear that this this thing is not as texas the state is calling an abortion it might be a medical medically still called that but it's not called that as far as a legal um like uh understanding of the word is concerned i agree with you it might still cause confusion but i think that there's I'm not I'm not feeling as I'm reading this section that this is a deeply confusing way of phrasing it that should cause so much confusion. Mm. I think it it will con some amount of everything will always cause confusion. I think in in this case it just matters because 
the confusion could lead to the death of a woman. And that's why that, that confusion is part and parcel of passing laws. Even when you're very clear about it, some amount of people are stupid, some amount of people are scared. And when you say the hammer will come down on you if you do this thing instead of, uh, you know, uh, being sort of biased to do what is right for the woman and her health, that aspect of it, that I get. You know, I get that in this case, the fact that the, the Texas laws might cause a normal amount of confusion that would happen with every law all the time. Um, is especially important and especially worrying because women will die as a result of it. But I think to say that the fault is in the act, I think that's stretching. I don't. I don't feel like that's the fault is in the laws. You mean, or what? Do you, that the what fault do you is in the way that the law was phrased. I think this is just a high stakes situation, and in that case, it we just have to make a decision whether. In a high stakes situation where, let's say, you know, three percentage of the population, no matter how clearly you phrase an act, no matter how clearly you phrase a law, three three percentage three percent of the population will get confused and they will do the wrong thing or you know do a harmful thing, whatever. In this case, that three percent is a big deal. You know, it, it's it's a lot of women who are hurt or potentially endangered. And we have to then just decide whose life are, is it worth being biased towards or against, right? Um, so that's kind of where I'm landing on this. And this is just, this is just, I, I don't think it's in particular Texas and Texas's act. I think it's just, it's a high stakes situation. They're going to come down on you if you do the wrong thing. But um, it is Texas because in this case, the attorney general has been very clear that he's going to pursue providers that that do this. Right, I mean, right, right. I'm sure. So, but uh, right. So, they, I mean, they want to, from the religious perspective. I mean, it's not from the religious perspective. It's not the religious thing. killing somebody. You know, right. but OK, I'm saying the people that are pro uh, that are for pro-life. I don't like that term, but like. Right. I don't like anti I don't I like anti-choice. Anti I'll call okay. each of them the thing that they hate. I'll say anti-choice and well, no, pro-abortion, <laughs> pro-death and anti-choice. Um, but but with the the uh, the, the pro-lifers or religious people, like to them, this is the, the moral framework with which they're approaching this is that they're saying you will certainly kill one person when you do this. You will certainly do that. And now I'm weighing that against the possibility of killing somebody else which is a mother right so that's how they're viewing it and i think that it's not you know barbaric entirely if you if you adopt their framework it's not entirely barbaric um but that you know th well, that's what we have to decide as a society whether this uh, this framework makes sense but you know but, uh, yeah but this is an example of you have reached the end of the free version of this episode to hear the rest, go to a special place.substack.com and join our listener community. We will see you there.